Hello and welcome to a Wednesday live right here on the early line on Sports Grid and all across the Sports Grid network. That includes sportsgrid.com slash watch, where you can find your favorite destination and consume everything all across the grid. He is Donnie Wrightside, and I am Ben Stevens. We are together here for the next three hours up until 11 a.m. Eastern time after the opening night of dancing in the big dance in Dayton, Ohio. The first four matchups, two of the four that we saw on a Tuesday evening. Evening, the final night of the first four before all the chaos and madness truly ensues in the round of 64 on Thursday and Friday. And often Donnie will come onto the early line across the sports grid network and campaign to be a commissioner of Inter X Sport. Mm-hmm. Well, Donnie should be the committee chair for the NCAA men's tournament because he would have yeah. never allowed Virginia into the big dance. And it turns out DRS was correct. Exactly. I mean, sometimes we all understand what's at stake here, and that's the quality of what we're going to watch on TV. We just want to sit down and enjoy a basketball game, and Virginia basketball is just not enjoyable. I know we're going to get into this further here, but waking up on the right side of the situation this morning, that's your boy right here. That's you, Ben. That's everybody in the United States. We are better today than we were yesterday because Virginia is gone. Do you ever not wake up on the right side, given what your name is? That's true. I mean, I haven't lost a bet in weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, even though I did lose one <laughs> yesterday. But having said that, no, I always wake up on the right side, ready to rock and roll. Let's do it. We trust Donnie right side. We go around the association in these three hours as well. And it's opening morning for Major League Baseball in 2024 out in Seoul, South Korea. The updates in the opener between the Dodgers and the Padres coming your way in just a moment. First, we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience here. Hour number one of a Wednesday, live right here on the early line, Sirius XM, Channel 159. All of our radio terrestrial affiliates now in the fold as well. He is Donnie. I am Ben. First for action, or I guess we are going to go with the live update of the Padres and the Dodgers right now in Seoul, South Korea. It is opening morning in Major League Baseball. Bottom of the six, the Padres, the home designation on this Wednesday morning for the first game of the 2024 Major League Baseball season. And they have a two to one lead over the Dodgers. L.A. was booked as a minus 194 pregame favorite with Tyler Glass now on the bump. Yeah, we'll have some fun with the referendum after this game. Let's just say the Padres win this one 2-1 to one because the Dodgers down to their last nine outs here in this game. If they don't score a run to push it to extras and they lose 2-1, it'll be fun to talk about this overall. But it's a shame that we're talking about this series here when it's not technically opening day. I know people are probably watching the show right now. Like, Wait a second. Baseball's on this morning? Yes, it is here. And the Padres have that 2-1 to one lead. We'll see how it goes, see how it plays out. It's good that baseball back, even if yeah. is it really back yet. I mean, come on. Pre-game total eight and a half. Now that live number at five and a half. Bottom of the six. The Dodgers now a money line favorite live plus 164 in game live on the early line that's what we bring you mm. now out to Dayton True. Ohio where the dance started last night in the 2024 men's NCAA tournament the nightcap was a snoozer Donnie was already asleep but it probably put you to bed as well a statement made by Colorado State the Rams victorious by 25 Virginia basketball is that snooze fest, an offense that ranked in the bottom half of the country in college basketball on display last night. As Colorado State is victorious, they advance as the 10th seed in the Midwest region to take on Florida 67 42. The Rams easily cover as a two and a half point favorite on that money line around a minus 150 number and a total of 120 and a half does stay under. Yeah, Virginia should have never been in the tournament, but also case in point here. We knew the Mountain West was very good in conference here and a deep conference, which is why they got a lot of teams into the NCAA tournament. I've been the one telling you the ACC is very weak. Now, this, again, is not a referendum on the overall tournament of what Duke and North Carolina, let's just say, will do moving forward. But Virginia getting slapped by 20-plus points on the opening day of the tournament sort of feels vindicated here because I don't think Virginia is all that good overall. We'll get into it a little bit later, but it's good to see Virginia's out. We don't have to worry about horror basketball anymore on our eyes Ben so we will talk about what is up next I said taking on Florida in the Midwest region my mistake they will take on the seven seed Texas in the opening round of 64 in the first game of the first four in Dayton last night the first ever NCAA tournament victory in program history for the Wagner Seahawks who since the month of December have been playing with only seven 
fully healthy scholarship players. They were under 500 in NEC play. They win three games on the road against the three top seeds in the NEC conference tournament to get to the big dance, and they continue their dance as Wagner holds off Howard in the opener, 71-68. The Seahawks winning outright as a three-and-a-half-point dog. I thought we'd get an under in this game. I really did. I didn't think Wagner would get the 71 points and shoot the lights out basically in the first half. And by the way, shot very well, almost 50% as a team from the three-point yeah. line. Didn't see that one coming. But having said that, good on Wagner. It's crazy when you watch how, you know, it was Howard through their conference tournament, Ben, with what, five scholarship players. Then you take a look at Wagner who was playing with seven basically the entire season. Wild finish there. Good for Wagner moving on. They probably won't win another game, but you go down and saying, you know what? We actually won a basketball game in the tournament here in 2024. Congrats to them. It was a wild finish. Donald Copeland, who is the head coach of Wagner Seton Hall star during his days on the playing surface, decided not to foul. The Bison got three looks at a game tying three. Crazy. Just could not convert. Big news yesterday for the big dance as well for the four seed in the Midwest region. That would be the Kansas Jayhawks, who did not have either Kevin McCuller Jr. or Hunter Dickinson for the Big 12 tournament last week. And head coach of KU, Bill Self, confirming yesterday evening, Kansas will be without Kevin McCuller Jr. for the entirety, Donnie, of the NCAA tournament. That's going to be tough for Kansas. We didn't even anticipating them getting him back and also Hunter Dickinson. I still don't have a lot of support here for Kansas and thought they might even get knocked out in round number one. Now it looks like Kansas is going to be an afterthought in this tournament. It's tough because you never want to see the injuries, but happening at the wrong time for Kansas, no doubt. Kansas opened after it was revealed as a 35 to one price to win a national championship. Now make that 50 to one. The odds outlook for KU, we will discuss a little bit later on. The Denver Nuggets and the Minnesota Timberwolves in a huge game out in the Western Conference last night. Denver goes into the Twin Cities and wins 115 112. Minnesota does cover as a seven and a half point home underdog. Anthony Edwards, a 30 point performance. Almost made it 33. He had a look at the buzzer for a game tying three to send it into an extra session. It did not go in. Jokic usually distributes. He didn't last night. Dropped 35 points, shot 22 times, had 16 rebounds and only two assists. But that's what superstars do. Evolve when the team needs you to do a certain thing. He did that last night. And also, we were correct on this. That line was screaming to take the Minnesota yeah. Timberwolves, even though you're supposed to take the Nuggets in that situation. You couldn't pass up the T-Wolves at home getting the seven and a half because you knew the effort would be there. And it was. They covered, didn't win. Good win by the Nuggets. Denver and OKC now tied for the top spot in the Western Conference standings. Quickly, football news. Mike Williams, after seven years with the Chargers, now signs with the New York Jets. A one-year, $15 million deal. Caden Proctor, who was an all-SEC freshman of the year candidate for Alabama, went to Iowa as a transfer and then back in the transfer portal, probably making his way once again to Tuscaloosa. More on the early line next. NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know. When it's winter, go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's gonna have a <laughs> That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like this, it is. Is, this is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third, they get in. Third, this is the Penn State gonna rule. Be better than the West half. Yep. It, that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half. 
We'll let them in too, because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. I bought into Tennessee with their veteran team. I really did. But that's, you know, out the window. That ship has sailed today. A team that wins no games in their conference tournament has never gone on to win the national championship. So you can put Tennessee in that boat. You can put Duke in that boat from last night. You can put Creighton in that boat from last night. They all lost their first conference tournament game. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All I've heard you say on the network is, you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smarty. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. I hope you had your dancing shoes on last night because the 2024 men's NCAA tournament is officially underway. Two of the first four games in Dayton, Ohio. On the opening night of the big dance, we saw some legendary and historic basketball for one program in some dismal efforts offensively out of another. We start with the nightcap. It was a matchup of the two 10 seeds in the Midwest region. The winner advances to the round of 64 with a tourney win under its belt to take on the seven seed Texas. It was Colorado State and Virginia, two of the last four teams into the field of 68, despite many people looking at the Cavaliers and noting their pedigree, but saying, What is this UVA team doing in the NCAA tournament? It turns out all of those non-believers were proved correct last night, like our own Donnie Wright's side. As Colorado State hammers Virginia 67-42. The Cavaliers want the final nine minutes and 20 seconds of the opening half without scoring a single point. They had 14 at the break. They would not score their next point until 16-20 remaining in the second half. The broadcast had to show a graphic, Donnie, to tell us what the real time was between last Virginia points. It was 52 minutes, 9.48 p.m. Eastern, the final point in the opening half, 10.40 p.m. Eastern time in the second half. Virginia's offense was miserable, but shout out to Nico Medved and Colorado State, a victory in the NCAA tournament and advancing to the round of 64. Yeah, holding that flag up there for the Mountain West, good for them. An easy victory over Virginia, and we've talked about this ad nauseum. Should Virginia be in? Absolutely not. And also the brand of basketball, it's not even fun. If you could question Virginia, right, and say, you know what, I don't know if they should be in or not, but boy, they're fun to watch. Top five tempo in the country. They get up and down the court. This game might be 90-89 to when it's finished. We all know what we're settling into Virginia. They're going to wait out their opponent, hope they have a terrible shooting night, hold the basketball, and stall the game out here, which is ridiculous. They scored 42 points. You take a look at the shooting last night three of 17 from three-point range which was 18 percent 25 percent from the field as a team and 64 percent from the free throw line which they've always struggled anyway on offense particularly at the free throw line when we talk about getting your dancing shoes on hard to dance with two left feet and that's what virginia had last night i don't think anybody was surprised including myself waking up in the morning and seeing virginia got beat and scored less than 50 points the only shocker quite frankly is they got wasted by 25 points and you're right Everybody yeah. was sharing. It literally was an hour 
hour of real time, and Virginia hadn't scored a single point, which is incredible to think about. But we knew this was coming. The committee obviously thought maybe a spark would be there from Virginia or patting themselves on the back saying, hey, man, the ACC has treated us good over the years. Let's put another team in there from the ACC. Nonsense here. Good win by Colorado, and we do win as a nation this morning that Virginia won't be on our TV screens until next season. DRS, we had Mike DeCourcy from the Sporting News who comes on the Sports Grid Network on a weekly basis, also a bracketologist for Fox Sports on our Selection Sunday special on Selection Sunday. He had 67 of the 68 teams in the field correct. The seed lines were so drastically weird by the selection committee. He had a couple of nuances there, but he had 67 of the 68 schools into the NCAA tournament correct. The one he did not... He had Oklahoma in in favor of Virginia, and he was rather surprised the committee put in this Cavaliers team. And again, maybe it's not just a one-game sample size that proves us all correct. It's the entire body of work and that resume. Either way, whether it was the performance last night in Dayton or the season and the metrics for UVA, they did not deserve to be in the NCAA tournament, and that was proven correct last night. Now let's highlight Colorado State, 67-42, the victory for the Rams. Joel Scott last night leading the way, 23 points and 11 boards. A double-double as well for his fellow starting court mate, Nick Clifford, 17 points, 10 boards for CSU. This Rams team, Donnie, who was one of the six teams out of the Mountain West, but one of the two that will play in the first four, Colorado State and then Boise State tonight against Colorado, they were the teams punished for a weird reason, because of what the committee stated was the Mountain West in conference action elevating teams' resume. But Colorado State had one of the 85 best non-conference strength of schedules in college hoops this season, and they were the ones punished. When you look at Colorado State and you follow the metrics, 13 assists last night for the Rams on 26 made field goals. They move the basketball around with the best of them in the country. They open as a two and a half point dog against Texas in the round of 64 on Thursday. Give me Colorado State outright, but I'll certainly take the two and a half. No, I like where you're going with this, too, because I call it the slingshot effect. You've already entered in those nerves, right? Like, ooh, we're first four, nation on us, neutral court here, playing a team we're not familiar with. Hammer them, get on a plane, let's go win another basketball game as Texas waits. And also keep in mind, Texas doesn't really have an advantage because they were probably factoring in playing Virginia more than Colorado State. The reason I say this is Virginia has that unique game plan that you want to teach your kids up front and spend a little bit more time than what Colorado State's going to bring to the table. So therefore, Colorado yeah. State also now on an even playing field with Texas, no that the minute they won that basketball game, they can focus their efforts on Texas as well. Watch out for Colorado State. I agree with that sentiment here. I think they win another game here in the tournament. So as you look at the Midwest region, Colorado State will be the 10 seed. They will take on Texas. As we have shared, 11 of the 12 years so far with the first four format, we have seen a team that wins in the first four win at least another game in the round of 64, 11 of those 12 seasons kansas the big news last night no kevin mcculler jr for the entirety of this tournament ku despite being on the four line in the midwest region now a 15 to 1 price to win the midwest they were a nine and a half point favorite against samford in their opening round game now that line just seven in a hook in favor of the jayhawks we'll look at the tournament from here on out throughout these three hours but we continue the recap in dayton ohio last night what a story the Wagner Seahawks have been over the last month and a half. Since the end of December, they lost six scholarship players, four of them factoring into the starting lineup. They have been playing with seven guys since the end of December. They were seven and nine in NEC play, sub 500. They had to go on the road in all three games they played in the NEC tournament to win on the road and knock off the top three teams in the league to earn just their second ever trip to the NCAA tournament and now make it first ever victory in the big dance, 71-68. Wagner victorious last night over Howard, the champions of the MEAC. Wagner wins outright as a three and a half point dog and a total that closed at 127 and a half because of better offense from both teams does go over to start our first four action in Dayton. 
Yeah, Wagner, not really a fast team and also a very bad offensive team. If you take a look at the metrics here on efficiency, and they come out and score 71 points in that game, which included 38 points in the first half. And the crazy part about it was you take a look at Dayton, which, again, shots didn't fall in game number two, particularly for Virginia. The shots were falling from three-point range here for Wagner, which is something they don't do very well. Eight of 17, which is 47%. Quite frankly, the better three-point shooting team was Howard, and they come into the game only shooting 29% here. But I didn't think that game would go over. Quite frankly, I thought Howard was possibly the better team also in this spot. So good win for Wagner here moving forward. Howard was one of the 20 best three-point shooting teams in the country yeah. entering last night at better than 37%. Did not get the performance they needed and certainly at the end where Wagner did not foul in the closing seconds. They were up by three. Howard had three different looks and a game-tying three and just clanked off the iron. Melvin Council Jr. for Wagner. 21 points Seven assists, five rebounds, zero fouls, played all 40 minutes. The first player in the NCAA tournament in its history since assists began being tracked in 1984 to put up that kind of stat line. So Wagner now advances as the 16th seed in the West region. They will take on the top team in that portion of the bracket. That is North Carolina. The Tar Heels open as a 24 and a half point favorite against Wagner. The over under 133 and a half. But again, there is some conversation about setting automatic bids to the first four. And I understand that they don't get the full experience perhaps of the big dance, but they get an opportunity to rack up an NCAA tournament victory. It was the first in program history for Wagner last night. Plenty more around all the madness and more next. For this NCAA tournament. Ah, oh, that's the movie that we know. When it's winner go home, they love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's gonna have a oh! That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is, is. This is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need this to Penn find State's a way been... to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State rule. be better than the West half. Yep. It, that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. I bought into Tennessee with their veteran team. I really did. But that's, you know, out the window. That ship has sailed today. A team that wins no games in their conference tournament has never gone on to win the national championship. So you can put Tennessee in that boat. You can put Duke in that boat from last night. You can put Creighton in that boat from last night. They all lost their first conference tournament game. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head -head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back -back road games. 
I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In game live, prime time. Back to back, just utterly stinker quarters. In game live, overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. It's an early morning on this Wednesday, live right here on the early line stateside. We are well into the evening hours out in Seoul, South Korea, with the opening game of the 2024 Major League Baseball season between the Dodgers and the Padres. Live update for you, top of the eighth. The Dodgers trail by a score of 2-1. to one. L.A. opened as that pregame favorite, minus 194 on the money line with Tyler Glass now on the bump. San Diego countered with you, Darvish. And at the moment, the Padres trying to spoil the opening game of Shohei Otani's tenure in Los Angeles. Minus 192, San Diego a live favorite. The Dodgers, with no outs in the top of the eighth, do have a runner on first. Yeah, it should be interesting to see how this one plays out here. Teoscar Hernandez is at the plate. The thing I do love about the FanDuel Sportsbook is how quick the updates come if you're just watching it through the site itself, as opposed to on TV, you're like six pitches behind, it feels like. So you get that little bit of a cheating effect, but we'll see if the Dodgers play small ball here to advance a runner. We'll see how that one plays out. But the one thing we do know, the Dodgers are going to be very good this year, but I do love the fact that they might take a two-to-one loss early in the season, game number one, and then we get to start the question if the Dodgers are really that good. Oh, always love the overreactions at this point but also keep in mind two to one is not a surprise Ben we're playing overseas in a different time zone in an unfamiliar dome ballpark here to get the season underway when you know it usually takes batters maybe 50 60 70 at bats to get into the swing of the season and keep in mind from a handicapping perspective I always dislike the early parts of the season. Number one, usually the weather is bad in most cities here playing outdoors because it's cooler. But number two, like the pitchers, how long are they going to go to start the game? 50, 60, 70 pitches? Nobody's throwing a complete game on opening day. And also keep in mind, when you're trying to get that feel for the rotation, we don't even know who's going to be in the back end of the bullpen here. A lot of things up in the air. Sometimes it's better to sit back, take some notes, and just enjoy baseball for what it is. Because in a couple weeks, when those numbers start to come in, Ben, that's when we hit that and we get off and running. But good to see baseball back. And again, as I say, yeah, it doesn't feel like opening day. I'm sorry. I can't have the hype here. Like I went to bed last night. Can't wait for like opening day. It was 6.15 when I turned the TV on. Oh, look, that's right. Baseball's on TV. It's not supposed to be that way. Yeah, completely understood as well. The Padres got on the board first. It was a Xander Bogarts RBI single. That is how San Diego opened up the scoring for the 2024 Major League Baseball season. Both teams, though, only three hits. In this game, it wasn't like Tyler Glass now got shelled by any stretch of the imagination. Three hits for the Dodgers, two coming from Mookie Betts and Shohei Otani. Otani is one for four in his debut in a Dodgers uniform. I believe we are almost ready to welcome on a guest. I will hear from our producers in just a moment to see if we are, but it's a 2-1 game yet again in favor of San Diego. The Padres up in the top of the eighth. No outs, and the Dodgers do have a runner on first base. Any action I can convince you in in in-game live on TEL to see if you would jump on the Dodgers, Donnie. San Diego right now, minus 182, money line favorite, LA plus 142, live total five and a half. The over has the juice, or excuse me, the plus money at plus 124. If we expect a Dodgers rally, that would mean runs. Yeah, it looks like we just bumped up two here at the FanDuel Sports to a minus 205. So I'm wondering if there's an ah. out here for Teoscar Hernandez as it winds up. But it's not a bad number to take a look at. Plus 156, you got about five, six. You need, you need a base hit here to start to get some pressure. But it is interesting to see now that favorite, which was the Dodgers by about this mark, now is the San Diego Padres late here in the game. And tomorrow they will finish off their two-game set in Seoul, South Korea. Yoshinobu Yamamoto gets his start and his debut in a Dodgers uniform, he will face off against Joe Musgrove. So as we turn our attention once again to the NCAA tournament, I believe we are ready with one of South Jersey's finest over to my left. 
to now welcome on another that lives in South Jersey lore. From Pittman, New Jersey, it is John Crispin. Joining us here on the early line, a great at Penn State who will be on the call for multiple NCAA tournament games on Westwood One, which you can check out on Sirius XM Channel 88. John, we appreciate the time. Thank you for joining us here bright and early on this Wednesday morning on TEL. Hey, my pleasure. My time of relevance is running out. You know, there's only a couple more weeks left in the season. So, look, I'm happy to do this. Uh, and the fact that anybody even knows I'm from South Jersey, that just makes it even better. Well, listen, John, I did the intro, but mm. the man that you see on your right yep. side, Donnie right side, is from yep. where you are or nearly where you are as well. I yep. feel like he should have done the introduction, right, Donnie? It should have been. I mean, this is the right yeah, guy to have yeah. on at this time. And if anybody knows from South Jersey, I went to Sterling High School, which is in Camden County, oh, yeah. Pittman, New Jersey, home to some great, great basketball here and the Crispin family. Let's keep in mind here, Ben. Let me wow. give you a background. If you're talking about playoff Please. basketball, this guy scored 62 points in a playoff game in South Jersey. And if you want to talk about Steph Curry shooting from logos, this man Ooh. right here did it first in South Jersey. Look, let's get after it. Let's have some fun. This is the right guy to talk to, Ben, here in the tour. I appreciate that love. I really do. Like, I, mean, I don't get the, most of what I get in my job is, how did you get into this business? I'm like, well, I played. And they're like, yeah, high school. Like that's all I get. So yeah, I'm. I appreciate a little love. Listen, allow us, John, then to be your hype man. Anytime you make an appearance anywhere to get ready for a college basketball game. So let's focus Good. on the NCAA tournament. Again, you will be on the call on Westwood One for all the action we see in the big dance. As you look at the bracket overall, as we start with the generic view, and you look at yep. the four regions, East, South, Midwest, and West, in your estimation, John, which portion of the bracket is the most difficult path to a Final Four? You know, it's somewhere in the East, uh, it really is. And, and my concerns are less about some of the matchups that may scare you and more about how you look ahead. I think that's the, one of the more dangerous things that we forget to talk about is it's really easy to look ahead in the bracket at big matchups, particularly when you look at the East. The one, two, three, and four in the East are ridiculous. So in your minds, what you do as a team is you start to anticipate a little bit. You look ahead. But what, would, what have we learned about college basketball this year? It's like no one's that good. Anybody can beat anybody. So the last thing you can do is look past your first opponent. So I just think the East is loaded in, in a number of ways. And, and the thing is, anybody with a 7, 8, 9, 10, and frankly, 11, 12, 13, 14, they're dangerous. I mean, I know, yes, 15s and 16s have beaten 1s and 2s. That's great. But I, I still don't bank on them year in, year out. I think that's an anomaly and still will be. But the depth of the, the NCAA tournament this year, we, we call it parity, yeah. but, man, it's just quality depth. Uh, no one's really that good, which allows everybody else to rise. I feel like the basement in a lot of conferences have risen while the ceiling has maybe been lowered. And I think we're going to be the beneficiaries of that in the NCAA tournament. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun as it plays through, John, because UConn is the favorite here at the FanDuel Sportsbook yep. at a plus 370 price to cut down the nets. You played high Division One basketball there, obviously, with UCLA and also at Penn State. Talk to us about you have to win six games in a row against quality yeah. competition, all traveling and on neutral courts. How hard is that to do, and how do you get your team prepared to do that? Well, look, it's really hard to do when you have to constantly adapt to the opponent. I think it's much easier if you take that John Wooden approach, which, you know, granted, his teams were always just better than everybody else. So you've got to consider that. But the John Wooden approach was, hey, we're going to do what we do and make sure we do it to the best of our ability. So we're going to maximize our potential. And if we do that, we don't lose. Right. There's nobody that can beat us. I think that's the approach you've got to take in the NCAA tournament. There are going to be certain things matchup wise that you can do maybe to limit you know, certain aspects of your opponent, maybe a certain player or a skill set. But you can't get so committed to stopping everything that a, a, that an opponent does on a short notice, right, on short prep. You really got to focus on maximizing your potential, trying to dictate the way the game's played. That's the biggest one to me. We talk about matchups. Well, matchups really come down to how the game's played. So if there's a certain style matchup, well, who can dictate the style of the game? That matters. So, again, experience matters. Why does experience matter? Well, experience is preparation, but it's also being able to dictate the game. Old dudes know how to play the game the way they want, and I think that is the most important thing in the NCAA tournament, right? That experience that allows you to settle in, make the game yours, and not be chasing an opponent for 40 minutes because that never really bodes well in the NCAA tournament. 
So, John, the big dance starting last night in Dayton. Wagner picking up its first ever NCAA tournament win in program history. Virginia can't score, and Colorado State won by 25 to advance as the 10th seed in the Midwest region. As we focus on some other significant news in the Midwest region, Bill Self telling reporters last night that Kansas will be without Kevin McCuller Jr. for the entirety of the NCAA tournament. How significant, John, is the absence of McCuller for the Jayhawks in the big dance? I mean, look, it's significant on both sides of the ball. I mean, this is a guy with two triple doubles. It, it's not just like he's a good scorer every now and then. He's their leading scorer. It's not like he's a good defender. He's their best defender. So it is significant. And the other part is Hunter Dickinson's not healthy. So Hunter Dickinson's not healthy. No Kevin McCuller. Yeah. And in a very matter-of-fact way, by the way, which almost makes you think that they made this, this decision a while ago. And there were just there was a little gamesmanship there, but I'm I'm very concerned about Kansas. I was concerned about Kansas all season. I never really liked their balance, never liked their depth. I thought they were good because of the personnel they had, but when you start chipping away at that personnel, you got problems. So major concerns for Kansas. If if that's the case, I mean they're gonna have to really prove that they even deserve the seeding they got. Yeah, that 4-13 matchup in the Midwest against Samford, yeah. the champions of the SoCon, was going to be difficult already. The Bulldogs, one of the best three-point shooting teams in all of the country. The line was nine and a half in favor of KU. Before we got the official mm-hmm. confirmation on the status of Kevin McCuller Jr., now just seven and a half in favor of the Jayhawks. John, we appreciate the time. Thank you for joining us here. And you can hear John Crispin on the call throughout the NCAA tournament on Westwood One Channel 88 on Sirius XM. John, safe travels to wherever your destination is for the NCAA tournament. We're back here on the early line in just a matter of moments to go around the association. We do that up next here on Sports Grid. NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's gonna have a chance. That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is. is. This is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need this to Penn find State's a way the- to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State rule. They're always going to be better than the West half. Yep. It- that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. I bought into Tennessee with their veteran team. I really did. But that's, you know, out the window. That ship has sailed today. A team that wins no games in their conference tournament has never gone on to win the national championship. So you can put Tennessee in that boat. You can put Duke in that boat from last night. You can put Creighton in that boat from last night. They all lost their first conference tournament game. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head to head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game time decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. What we've heard you say on the network is you're either winning 
before you rebuild In game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart Team. Winning back to back road games. I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In game live, prime time. Back to back, just utterly stinker quarters. In game live, overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Welcome to In Game Live, all access live right here on a Wednesday morning on the early line because the opening game of the 2024 MLB season just got a whole lot more exciting. The Dodgers were down two to one, top of the eighth. Now the Dodgers are up four to two, still in the top half of the eighth inning. The Dodgers were an underdog when we were talking right before John Crispin came on. Make that 5-2. What did Shohei yeah. Otani just do, DRS? That's Yeah, exactly. So I'm try- I don't have it on the TV because obviously that would be unprofessional okay. for me to be watching a baseball game during the show itself. But as everybody yeah. knows, yesterday, now Otani showing 2 of 5 with an RBI. My best bet yesterday was those bets and breakfast wagers, which was Shohei yeah. Otani to record an RBI to plus 100. That cash is late. Better late than never. We're off to a great start here in Major League Baseball. Now, Shohei Otani cashes in. We cash in in the morning. Good stuff all the way around five to two now yeah so let's bring you the update a huge four run already eight inning Mm. for the Dodgers still only one out in the top half of this frame it was Kike Hernandez back with the Dodgers hit a sacrifice fly that scored Max Muncie then Gavin Lux grounds into a fielder's choice but still results in a run Teoscar Hernandez the new Dodger crosses home plate Mookie Betts with two men on hits a single that scores Outman and then Shohei Otani his first RBI as an LA Mm. Dodger hits in a single to left and Gavin Lux scores those are the four runs in the top of the eighth the Dodgers now on top five to two mad at myself I did not bet that live when the Dodgers Mm. were a money line underdog with a juicy plus 164 price or the over of an in-game live total at five and a half with plus money on the over as well any more updates from Seoul South Korea in the opening game of the MLB season in 2024 will come your way before it wraps up now we go around the association just a five game slate in the NBA on a Tuesday night but a significant matchup out in Minneapolis between the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Denver Nuggets. Both teams entered a half game behind Oklahoma City for that first place spot in the Western Conference standing. Seven and a half point spread in favor of the Nugs. Denver does go on the road and picks up a win, 115-112. Anthony Edwards, despite having a 30-point performance, had a shot at the buzzer from deep to tie it and send it into the extra session. It comes up just short. The Nuggets prevail, 115-112. Minnesota does cover as a 7.5 point, 8-point home underdog. Slow and steady as they go, the Denver Nuggets, who for my money at this point now, with let's just say 15 or so games left in the NBA season, they're probably going to get the number one overall seed. So you will be going through the Denver Nuggets in elevation with a team that had already won a championship from the previous year. And also, keep in mind, the Denver Nuggets go on the road. A great basketball team on the road, not necessarily, but 21-15 and 15 nope. now in the season. Uh, this is an anomaly as well. You take a look at shooting percentage from the field as a team. 51.9%. How about three-point range? 51.9%. This is a road game, people. And you take a look at Nikola Jokic in this game, 35 points. Usually we see him with the triple-double. Equal, right? Let's go 22 points, 16 rebounds, 11 assists. He had to yep. score 35 points last night. So if you are Jokic, he can do it by distributing, as we said, and also by scoring if he needs to. That was a big-time game for the Nuggets. And I love the fact that Jokic took that basketball game over and shot 22 yep. times. When you got to win basketball games, you lean on your superstars. And he he was right there for him last night. Still a double double for Nikola Jokic, 35 points, 16 boards, going over both his points prop. That was 26 and a half. And his rebounding number entering last night in the Twin Cities. No Carl Anthony Towns, of course, for Minnesota. 11 and a half was that number. Anthony Edwards, after dunking all over John Collins to start off this week, backs it up with a 30 point performance over his points prop of 28 and a half so as we look at the stars for last night 
we still look at what it means for the Western Conference race. Denver with the victory. They do not cover. Now 11-15-1 against the spread as a road favorite this year. Minnesota's been a dog without Cat in five of their last seven games. Three and two straight, or three and two against the number. Two victories outright. The Nuggets now move up into the first place spot alongside Oklahoma City. And now Minnesota falls back to a full game disadvantage behind both Denver and OKC. The Nuggets, we have started to see, Donnie, the positive market movement for Denver as we get closer and closer to the end of a regular season and to the playoffs. Denver now half the price of the Clippers. LA, the second best number. Denver, the favorites by themselves, plus 140. Then you see the Clips at plus 280. Then a pretty big drop off, nearly five bucks to the Thunder at plus 750. Then there's the Timberwolves at 11 to 1. Yeah, and you're trying to line this up to see how it finishes because I just told you, I think the Denver Nuggets now a game, are actually tied at the top of the standings here with OKC. You trust that pedigree, right? And it's not as if OKC is playing bad basketball, Ben. Seven and three in their last ten. It's just that the Denver Nuggets are doing their, oh yeah, we're going to win eight out of every ten games here down the stretch. Good luck with that. But the Minnesota Timberwolves still only a game back technically of first place. But the good part about the Timberwolves is you're not going to get on that slippery slope, right? Let's just say the top six was you know between three and a half to four games between all of those teams. That's not the case. So while you're trying to get Carl yeah. Anthony Towns back on the basketball court, a healthy Rudy Gobert, you have some breathing room between that three and four seed, which is the Clippers, which they have a four-game lead on, really talking about point. the Minnesota Timberwolves. So still some time to get it together, but you're not going to hit that free fall that goes, oh, no, man, because the locker room psyche at that. Boy, I thought we had the number one seed. How did we wind up at the fifth or sixth seed at this point? I don't think that's going to happen. So there is some saving grace for the Timberwolves. If they can get healthy down the stretch, hang on to that top three and still maybe do some damage in the Western Conference. Despite a loss on its home floor, they did cover as that eight-point home dog. The market has actually worked in Minnesota's favor as of this Wednesday morning. That 10-1 to number now plus 950. The Suns at 11-1. to The Clippers, by the way, 6-8 and since the All-Star break. Only four covers in that 14-game span as well. The Clippers doing that thing that makes you question their overall optimistic outlook for a true conference contending run come the postseason. The Mavericks are playing really good basketball as of late, and the Mavericks go on the road last night to San Antonio and pick up another win. Now, they were a nine-point road favorite in this Texas tilt, one or 113-107. Dallas does not cover, but the Mavericks have now won six of their last seven games, and they have covered in six of those seven games as well. Yeah, and you're taking a look at what's going to work for them. And these are some of the games that I really like. And you say, well, they're supposed to really beat down the San Antonio Spurs. That should be a given here. But you take a look at Kyrie Irving, 13 of 21 for the floor, 28 points overall. But they still won this basketball game, which typically they may have lost in the past because Luka Doncic, who has been unbelievable the past month, played 40 minutes, Ben. He shot 6 of 27 from the floor, which yeah. included 2 of 11 from three-point range and only finished with 18 points. That's a game in the past that even against lower competition, the Mavericks might have lost. We don't need to see Kyrie and Luka both get 30 just to put them in ball games anymore. Good win by the Mavericks. And also keep in mind, it's not about style points here late in the season. Just right. pick up victories and keep moving forward. Keep yourself out of that play in tournament. 16 dimes and 10 boards for Luka Doncic. Yet another triple-double following the All-Star break. The Mavericks, by the way, have now gone under in five of their last seven games. As we get closer to the postseason, you're going to start to see that trend emerge when teams are playing more important basketball and playing their best basketball. Some of those lofty NBA totals tend to stay under 234 and a half was the total last night in San Antonio. It does stay under. The Spurs have covered in eight of their last 11 games. Victor Wembanyama last night for San Antonio, 12 points, 11 boards, and six blocks. But the Spurs overall, just 15 and 54 throughout Wembanyama's rookie campaign in the NBA. A number that stood out to both of us, Donnie, last night, the New Orleans Pelicans. A seven and a half point strong road favorite in Brooklyn against the Nets. And the number was very, very correct. The Pels win by 13 on the road, 104-91. New Orleans now, as they are starting to play really good basketball, have won seven of eight. And they have covered in all seven, all seven games they have won and covered. They have also been booked as the favorite side. 
Yeah, Pelicans looking to be one of those teams that might be able to do some damage as long as they keep themselves in the top six, which right now they're firmly entrenched, roughly a two-and-a-half game lead over the Dallas Mavericks and also the Kings yep. there that currently sit in that sixth position. And then you take a look at the Brooklyn Nets, one of those teams that you thought might be able to challenge to get into the play-in tournament. That's not going to happen anymore. Way too many injuries. 28-and-a-half games yep. back, by the way, of the Boston Celtics, but quite frankly, three-and-a-half <laughs> games back of the Atlanta Hawks just to get to that 10th seed. That's not going to happen. The Red off getting into the lottery, getting some ping-pong balls year but a good win on the road again not about style points you're supposed to beat teams ben you got to beat these teams that improves your standings and last night the pels did that 28 points for zion williamson and seven boards intriguing as we go back to the western conference odds again the pels have won seven of their last eight games under by the way in six of their last seven last night's total of 214 and a half does stay under new orleans is only a half game behind the clippers for that four spot If New Orleans ends up in the four spot, they would host the opening round series come the Western Conference playoffs. And we showed you those Western Conference title odds. New Orleans is at 34 to 1 right now and might have home floor advantage in the opening round of the postseason. I say that, Donnie, not thinking New Orleans is going to surpass Denver, Mm -hmm. L.A., maybe even the Oklahoma City Thunder or the T-Wolves. But when you have a home team, In an opening round playoff series at a 34 to 1 price, there could be some profitability by the time you get to the postseason. No, and that's the goal here, turning those tickets into plus money. It's not always about, again, those old thoughts of, oh, I'm going to take the Phillies to win the World Series every year when they were bad. Well, it's not the case. You don't have to win the World Series. You just have to commit yourself and say, I think they can win a playoff round because then the advantages go in your favor. And it's the reason why we talk about we're not hot and heavy on taking the Celtics because, yes, we think they're the best team in basketball, but also – injuries do happen and I don't want to get stuck with money that's a two to one or three to one favorite it's better to have that 30 to four to one ticket where if you get some breaks along with that 34 to one and a team playing good basketball that could be a gold mine at the end of the rainbow as opposed to going like oh man come on I had a two to one price and didn't have winning any money and they didn't even advance past the second round give me the longer numbers here because good things can happen there and always you could turn that profit if they win a series or two you're in the money The Pelicans in that fifth spot in the Western Conference, a half game behind the team in the fourth spot, that would be the Clippers. The Orlando Magic in the fifth spot in the Eastern Conference, a half game behind the team in the fourth spot, that would be the New York Knicks. And the Magic are very hot on the heels of the Knicks. Last night, 13-point home favorite in Orlando against the bad Charlotte Hornets. And the Magic cover in win by 20. Covering is what Orlando does. They were the best cover team in the NBA. Now 46 and 23 against the number this year for a team that is 48 and 21 straight up. That is a 67% cover clip. They are the only team is Orlando, Donnie, that is covering in more than 60% of their games this year in the association. And it's a 46 and 23 against the spread mark. And I'll tell you what's incredible, too. The Magic last night, we thought they would win because, again, the Hornets aren't really playing basketball to win games down the stretch. The Orlando Magic are trying to get the highest seed they can. But correct me if I'm wrong, yesterday, we looked at that. I believe it was a 203 and a half total and said that is ridiculous yep. and it should go over the total. Well, it blew the total away, Ben, with a 112.92 finish by that half correct. point right there. So there you go. The over came in because that number was just too low to say, you know what? I think we're going under in that one. The total did drop by a point prior to tip two, 202 wow. and a hook. The Magic's mm. still under in 10 of their last 13 games. Orlando has also not just been covering because the odds makers are not booking them correctly. They're an underdog in spots. They should probably be laying points. The Magic have covered in their last nine games as a favorite, even last night laying 13 at home against the Charlotte Hornets. Again, the Magic only a half game behind the New York Knicks for that fourth seed in the Eastern Conference and maybe hosting a playoff series near Disney World. Back to Major League Baseball's opening game next. NCAA tournament. Ah, that's the movie that we know when it's winner go home. They love to go home. Tennessee's now in my phony club. They should all get together and drink green tea. Tournament's gonna have a 
That is a team I'm betting on right now. We are feeling this. You are feeling this at home. The excitement and the atmosphere only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. In the Big Ten, it's the same thing. No offense to you guys. This feels like the Penn State rule. This feels like... This it is, is. This is the guaranteed Penn State to get in. We need to Penn find State's a way been... to let them in because they can't beat Michigan. They can't beat Ohio State. But right. if we make them a third... They get in. Third, this is the Penn State rule. They're always going to be better than the West half. Yep. And that one year that lightning in a bottle catches on the West half, we'll let them in too because they'll bring people. The Bostonian versus the book. I bought into Tennessee with their veteran team. I really did. But that's, you know, out the window. That ship has sailed today. A team that wins no games in their conference tournament has never gone on to win the national championship. So you can put Tennessee in that boat. You can put Duke in that boat from last night. You can put Creighton in that boat from last night. They all lost their first conference tournament game. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning your rebuild in game live all access nobody has been more profitable as a dog than shaka smart team winning back-to-back road games i, I don't care if they're playing topeka high i i wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever in game live prime time back to back just utterly stinker quarters in game live overtime honestly as, as you sit here and listen watch right now you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The opening game, the opening morning of the 2024 Major League Baseball season, not here stateside, but out in Seoul, South Korea. The Seoul Series, a two-game set between NL West foes, the Los Angeles Dodgers, and the San Diego Padres. First pitch was just after 6 a.m. Eastern time here in the States. The Dodgers trailed up until the top of the eighth. They were down by a score of 2-1. to one. But a four-run eighth inning, including an RBI single for Mookie Betts, the first-ever RBI for Shohei Otani in a Dodgers uniform. They score four in the top of the eighth. And now the Dodgers into the top of the ninth, trying to add some more insurance up 5-2 to two over San Diego. Yeah, and here's the tough part about the Dodgers, right? I actually would have liked to see them lose 2-1 to because I think the jokes would have been pretty yeah. funny. Ah, oh, look at how much they paid, and boy, they're really overrated. But it just goes to show you how tough the Dodgers are, where you got to go through that lineup for nine full innings here. And you can hold them down as long as you want, but there's a lot of superstar talent in that lineup. And quite frankly, looking right now in the top of the ninth inning, I don't see anybody out here. Yeah. Another two runners on for the yep. Dodgers, so looking to tack it on. That's why the Dodgers had that win total yesterday posted at 103 and a half for good reason. They are stacked and are probably going to add to the deck throughout the season, whether it be pitchers coming into that lineup healthy again or even making those moves at the deadline. The Dodgers be a tough out as long as they stay healthy, showing some metal here late in that game. Pretty good. Tyler Glass now got the start for L.A. in his Dodgers debut. Five inning, five innings of work, two hits, two earned runs. Did walk four, only three strikeouts. Teoscar Hernandez now up at the dish for L.A. Two runners on, no outs in the top of the ninth inning. Teoscar Hernandez, one of those lower-key signings the Dodgers made this offseason from Seattle, 
has two runs in his Dodgers debut, a 5-2 lead. Again, the Dodgers closed as a minus-194 pregame favorite. You could have got them as a money line underdog, as we shared in this opening hour, live right here on the early line. Hour number two of the early line comes your way in just under a minute. Some National Football League news. Aaron Rodgers, not the vice president, the quarterback, has a new target. That's next.